Thank you very much. Last time we've talked about the budget and all these things, you know, and uh, we, uh, when it comes to the practical things, you know, people sometimes run away. They don't want to hear it, like, especially when we come to debt, you know, our whole world is built on a debt economy. It's built on the fact that um, the banks enslave us and gives us more debt than what you actually can afford. And it's a thing that we, you need to be very cautious about. We need to understand that the most important thing and, and uh, about how God created man is the fact that God created us as free living human beings, free like him. And there's nothing maybe in this world that can you enslave you so quickly than debt. Because it, it sounds so good. It is so an acceptable thing in this world, you know, that we can have debt. But before you you uh, open your eyes uh, enough, you, you can't believe how the debt has enslaved you. Uh, you know, we sit in a situation more or less, even in South Africa, that when we get to 1 January every year, already about 80% of what will be earned that year is already spent at 1 January because of the debt that will be paid off in that year, and that is mainly to banks. So banks is the biggest factor in the process that you need to conquer. You cannot go to financial freedom if you can't conquer the bank. And one of the uh, ways to conquer the bank is that you need to become a bank or you need to join a bank that is not enslaving you, like Geek himself. Itself. Geek is one of those banks that is not there to, to enslave you, but to make you free. So uh, we'll get to that later. But the point is you need to get out of debt. You need to become very, very serious about this whole subject. Debt is, 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 is money that you uh, 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 will earn today, but it's already spent, uh, will be earned tomorrow, but it's already spent today. And it's not a nice thing to live that way because we always said, you know, debt is like uh, you spend money. You do not have to buy things. You do not need to impress people. You do not know. That is bad debt. You know, you have personal loans and credit card loans, and at the end of the day, uh, you've got nothing to pay it back except uh, to just cut it from your salary every month. If there is maybe something like good debt, you know, good debt is maybe when you have debt and you buy a house and then the tenants uh, pay the house. It's not it's not you that need to pay it. The tenants uh, need to pay, uh, can pay it. Then it's sort of good debt, you know, although debt is always a, a risky thing and you need to manage it very correctly. And in this case, the good debt, if you can say it that way. Uh, and at the end of the day, it can help you to become financially free. But you must be cautious that debt must never become a lifestyle in your life. You must, you must, you must get the principles in your mindset concerning debt very, very clear for yourself. Um, because it's a thing of, yeah, other people do it, you know, but what about me? But it, it doesn't work that way. You must understand that if you can maybe not pay cash for something, you know, you don't buy it. I mean, my father never had a uh, car debt. It was a mindset in his, in his life. He said, I will no, never go and make a car debt. And he never had it. And he had an average salary. He always paid his cars cash. You see, the, the problem is not that there is not enough money in this world. The problem is not that you do not have enough money. The problem is your mindset. Your mindset about yourself, about your lifestyle, about how you want to live. And... Um, with the influence of my father, I said to myself that I will also pay my cars uh, uh, cash. Uh, or even, you know, I tell people, well, just pay half cash, you know, at least. But don't allow this uh, car debt thing to, to take you so much into debt. But let us, let us uh, just realize that this is not a thing that's from God. We cannot live like that. Uh, it, is, it is devastating in our lives. And except for one car that I made a hundred thousand loan through Geek, I always bought my cars cash and um, paid it off that one loan in two years. The point is, what is your mindset? Uh, do you believe that it is better for you to live cash, or do you believe, you know, uh, let's take the easy way, let's just get the money? You know, it's so easy to spend ten thousand, but to repay ten thousand, it's 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 difficult, and ten thousand isn't even a lot of money. What about 100,000, 200, 500,000? And so we can go on. So direct things that we can do around debt, you know, is, is just, you know, we can uh, have more discipline on our budget. We can close our life circle, you know, in terms of uh, what on what do you live? How do you live? 
I mean, when people start to look at their budget or their money, you know, they spent like, you know, just 11 o'clock, buy a quick Coke and a, and a bar one maybe or whatever. But when you count all those things, you know, you come to a lot of money. Get get a disciplined life circle, lower your lifestyle, sell redundant uh, stuff in your life that you do not need. But you cannot conquer debt by just uh, uh, do, let's say, negative cutting things, discipline. It, you need to start with discipline. But at the end of the day, you will not fully conquer it just by negative steps, you know, cutting, uh, uh, lift smaller or whatever you you, you can do about it. Is, um, use more of less of this and all these things. Because that's not a, a nice lifestyle just to cut, 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 cut. You need to come to a point where you uh, where you get to a point where you get increased income, where you start to get passive income, where you manage your finances much more according to your plan, where you invest in stuff that gives you a passive income, where you maybe get more than one income stream. That is also very important. And uh, and two or two of the most important things is, is to start living according to your creative purpose, because the blessing in your life is upon your gifts and your talents and, 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 and your passion. That is where the blessing is. That is where the financial provision is, because you you came as a sponsored, already sponsored person to this earth. The main point on earth is not to find the money, but to find what you need to do. Do, and the blessing of the Lord will be released upon it. He doesn't say everything will just come, you know, like Pasella, if you can say it. Yes, we will work, but it will not just be, I need to work because I need to have money at the end of the month. You work because you like what you do. You you enjoy what you do. It's not for you, you know, about number one, what, what I get at the end of the month. Because if it was all about that, I've never... You know, I've basically never had a salary because no one wanted to pay me. But I, I, I stick to what I was in my life and I was sent for. And I, and I, and the Lord helped me every month right through my life till up till now. And there was not one month and one day that the Lord dropped me. Because his blessing is upon what he has sent you to do. And he has sponsored you already for what he sent you to do. Uh, and in the in the process, the, another thing is that you need to invest in yourself. The only difference between real wealth creators and other people that's battling is is only one thing: it's educating yourself. Wealth creators' number one spending is upon themselves, not in terms of going on holiday and buying a car and whatever. They pay people to educate them constantly. A guy like Yusaki has got constantly five to eight people that's training him. He's spending up to millions uh, in terms of that because he knows that the outflow of his life will be according to the educational level of his own life. And you can educate your life on, on, on YouTube. I mean, he's all this stuff. You can go to so many web pages that is beautiful stuff to educate yourself financially because that's also the heart of geek is that is that wealth creation comes out of uh, education educating yourself concerning finances the school never taught you maybe your parents never taught you the university never taught you you need to educate yourself and find people that will educate you because this is the most important factor that will determine the outcome of what you will have in life uh, and when I find out this in my life, at 36, I was in a certain sense in the lowest income group. I had never had a salary even. And I could educate myself. In, and within 10 years, I could go from the lowest to the highest income group in, uh, in, in basically, let's say, in South Africa. Because it's all about education. And, and I'm not impressed by the amount of money. But, but let us make sure. It's, it, don't go and look for the money. Because you will fall into the trap. It's not about the amount of money. Yes, we want the amount of money. But you don't look for the money. Look for who you are. Look for what is in you. Educate yourself. Because everything that you need at the moment and all the money you need for your debt is already in you. You just need to get it out. But we always look to other people. Where can I get a free meal and a free ride and a free whatever? It is it is not the right way. That's not the right way to get out of it. Because you need to take responsibility for your own life. And stop looking for the free meals and where you can get money or even steal money. That's even more worse. That's not the way of blessing out of, out of your problems. I need to get to a place where I don't deny my debt. But I be honest with myself that this is not a life. 
This is surely not a life to have all these people moaning and groaning and screaming in your ears and phoning you and you need to block this and block that. And I've, I've, I've seen uh, in myself with some of my tenants, you know, they just constantly change phone numbers. Why? Because the, the, the debtors are haunting, haunting, hunting. What do you, uh, what do you call it then? It's not a nice life. I do not want that life. I want to be free. I want to have an overflow. I want to invest in other people. I want to enjoy life. I don't want people to phone me because of this outstanding, this and there and all. But you need to take responsibility and focus in your life in all of this. You need to understand that although God God has made us the, the, the head of creation, that although he is he's he's, he's in control of the universe, he's given the rulership on earth here for us to reign on earth. I reign in my own situation. I decide what will happen. I decide where to go. And I need to get my mindset correct because whatever you decide will happen. But if you if your mindset is wrong and you say like, think, oh, uh, you know, I, I can't get out of it, you will not get out of it. If you believe you can get out of it, you can get out of anything because there's no one in this universe that's so with you in terms of getting you out of your debt than God himself. Because he's the first one that knows as your creator that you were not made to live under all these uh, uh, suffocating things like debt and owning people. And the whole, the, the, I mean, the global people has got the whole world and all governments in this clamp of debt and giving them money and, and um, borrowing money and all these, these things that we know of. I need to take my responsibility in the whole process. And the responsibility is, is, is not, like, let's say, to make the money, but to start to live the life that's in me, to, to, to uh, do my part. As I do my part, God will do his part. We've, I've already talked about, you know, the story of the pastor that gets to the farmer and said, you, my brother, you know, uh, uh, the Lord has blessed you here. Look at everything, you know, everything is running so well and you're making a lot of money and everything is just blessed around here. And, and then the pastor said to the, the, the farmer said to the pastor, uh, pastor, you know, when I came here and the Lord was farming alone here, there was no profit here, nothing. It was since I came here that there's profit on this farm, you know, and that's a very good story to tell you that in the, uh, in the first place, you can do nothing of God if God do, uh, did not create the earth and the, the cattle and the wind and the whatever, you know, you cannot farm if there's not a farm. That's God's part. But you need to get on the farm and get profit out of it. You need to put in the 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 um, uh, the site where is the where you're gonna plant where you put the cattle you know and where you put the house and whatever you need to take up responsibility for all the processes that's on that farm and start to direct it to a certain direction so that you can make profit out of it yourself so it is it is God as that gave us all this this potential and that potential is called you and the world around you. And you need to direct it to that place where how you want to live. And you need to make up your mind how you want to live in, in, in all of this um, uh, and not to fall into all of the slavery. I don't want to go deep into the, the legal side of debt. You all know, you know, when you live, when you've got more debt than you can handle, there is a legal thing that kick in and uh, they uh, want to blacklist you. And you've got lots of problems when you're on a blacklist. You need to work it off. I mean, you, you can go in, in South Africa under debt administration. I know even Geek can help you with that. Um, uh, to, 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 uh, not, uh, not what you call it, uh, uh, yeah, debt administration. And then they can, uh, they can uh, uh, get you some lower fees and all these things uh, uh, as, as through registered debt counselors. Uh, in South Africa, debt is a very easy thing to get, and you can even get, you know, up to fifty thousand rand. You new new laws, you know, you can get easily out of it. And in spite of all these things, they give people debt around every corner at every shop. And so I don't want to go into that. As a, a, even as a business, if things goes wrong, they can liquidate you. But let me tell you one thing: it's not a nice thing when the bailiff stop at your door and they want to take everything. I had once an experience of that because I had an accident on the N1 
and 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 I mean the guy drove into me. Uh, I had eighty thousand rand of damage. I decided not to sue him in any way. I forgave him and everything, and then he sued me without telling me. He put the thing through the courts, and one day the bailiff just stopped uh, in front of my house, want to load everything, everything. It's not a nice feeling. Let me tell you one thing. When the law clamps down on you concerning debt, there is no grace. Absolutely no grace. You step out with nothing. It's not a nice thing on 45, 50, 55 to walk out of your house, to walk away from your car and your furniture and everything you have with nothing into the street. And even much, much more not something convenient when you've got children and a wife and whatever. Luckily, it never happened to me because we could turn around the case because I was not guilty and all these things, but uh, that, that's a story of its own. The point is you, you, you make sure you never get there. Everything that you've got debt on is not yours. It's not an asset. A house is not an asset until it's paid off, number one. And number two, it gives you profit. Otherwise, it's not an asset. It's in the process of becoming an asset. It's not an asset. It must give you money. It must be paid off. So uh, so if there's anything, that's where Geek Bank is, is, is very good, you know. Uh, get loans of 0% and start paying off your, your small debt. And then you tackle the bigger ones and the bigger ones and um, until you get at the, at the end of the road. I just want to close off with uh, steps. You know, uh, in terms of becoming debt free, that I believe is very important. I've already talked about a lot of things, but but maybe some practical steps is 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 also good to mention. The first thing is that you must change your attitude concerning debt. You must declare war on debt. You must tell yourself that debt is your enemy. It is not your friend. It's your enemy. When when the enemy clamps down, when the dead people clamps down on you, it's like the enemy devouring everything that you have. They've got no no grace for you at any at any level, and um, and you and you must understand that to be debt free is not a good idea. It is God's idea. It is God's way of living to be debt free. And if you have debt, you must must have good management over it and uh, uh, con risk management and know what you're doing. And if because like, you know, even like in my case, you know, I've got uh, houses and it's like yesterday I found that that one of my tenants just left, you know, just disappearing in the night. <laughs> you know, so, so a person living like that will never, never in life become debt free. But I must be able to handle that uh, risk. Uh, because the house is now empty. If, uh, they've never said anything. They just disappear. So you get things like that, and you must be able to handle the risk that's that uh, in the in the area that you're taking on and things happening. Life is not always always fine. But you must have the right attitude that to be debt free is is your is your birthright. It's not a good thing. It's God's thing. It's God's order. How He created us. He, he never wanted us to have things that that that's controlling us and ruling over us. It's 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 enormously nice to have a life where where you are free, free in every sense of the word. Not only free, but where you have financial freedom, where you can do things, and where you can become your own bank and you become your own economy, if you can say it like that. But it's possible to do that through trusts and all these things and, and uh, something like geek and uh, incorporation with other people. And so this the first thing is your attitude must be right, because if you don't believe in being debt free, you will never become debt free. It's not a good thing. Well, we'll see if we can get there. You will not get there. It's not we'll see. If you don't decide for yourself, listen, I'm going to get debt free by this time and this and uh, you won't get there. Because it's not serious enough for you. It's not. It must not only become an attitude. It must become a mindset. It must become a lifestyle in your life, not to be under any form of slavery uh, that's that's haunting you day and night. The second thing that's very important is that you must come to a place where you honor your creditors. You must honor the people that you owe money to. You know, I've got, as I sit here in my in my in my office, I've got my 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 uh, accounts are in front of me right here. 
they are the people I pay first. They are the most important people in my life. It's the people where I've got accounts. They know I pay them. I pay them even before they, they ask the money for it. Because I do not want to, to have someone phoning me for anything. Uh, of course, I've got accounts and stuff, you know, and debit orders and all these type of things and uh, things you need to pay monthly. But for me, it's the most important people in my life. I need to honor them. It's not like, you know, oh, you know, life is hard. Let's let buy myself steak every every weekend and let's go on. No, 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 no. There's no steak for me if I haven't paid my 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 uh, 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 the people I owe money to. I need to pay them. They are the people that's in the highest honor in my heart because they have given me something. I've got something of them. Now I need to pay them. Yeah, but we can get through this and we can get out of this. I, I don't go that road. I, you know, if you go that road with the bank, maybe, you know, because the bank is robbing us all the way, morning, noon, and night. But in terms of people, I bought something from them. I, I need to honor them. And because the Lord is, has got an honor for people, and I need to honor them as well. And I don't look at other people, I, I, uh, you know, people that I owe money to. They are very important people in my life. And if you can't pay them, you phone them, you tell them, listen, it's important for me. This is my situation. This is what's going on. I'm in the light with you. I'm not like a thief in the night and, you know, uh, evacuating home and, and uh, moving my furniture in the night. And then people find that I'm gone, you know, and changing my phone. You don't live a life like that. You get out of darkness because there's no blessing in darkness. You live in the light. You face your, 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 your account, your responsibilities. And, and, and then you, and you get even people to make you accountable and you keep yourself accountable to it that th this is my life and I want you to uh, keep me accountable for these decisions that I've made to be debt free at this stage and I'm going to do this and whatever it's all about. Um, is that uh, you, that I need to honor these people be because I, I realize, you know, once at one time, you know, when I was not so, what is it, so financially literate, you know, we end up with credit card debt and I really realize you, we are in deep trouble. And I sat down and I said to myself, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take us years to pay off this account. And I said to myself, I cannot live like this. I, I've ignored it and I've, you know, we'll get, you know, we'll get to pay it, you know, but it just grows and grows and grows. And if you just pay the interest, the bank just gives you more and more. And just suddenly you realize you're in deep, deep trouble. And I realized I cannot pay this back. You know, it will take me at least five years or something. And I just sat down and I said to my wife, I'm going to do something that's incredibly, maybe irresponsible, but I'm going to trust the Lord. I've confessed it. It is wrong. It is sin to live like this. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to, and I'm not saying you must do it, please. This is what I did. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to take all money that I've got at the end of the month and put it into this credit card debt. And if I do this more or less for six months, I will be out of it. Because I cannot afford living like this for the next five years. It's it. I, I'm not prepared. It's like it's like you don't have a life. I don't know how am I going to live because giving everything that I've got at the end of the month into that, you know, I, I'm I'm absolutely. You need to save me. You need to help me. I don't know how, but 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 for me, I declare war, and I need to honor this this uh, obligations and I get rid of it. And, and and we did it for six months. And let me tell you, not one month we lived less than all the other months in our year. Because why? Because it is a life in the light. It's a life of honoring. It's a life of, of, of uh, 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 a right mindset. It's a life of getting out of, you know, um, out of your debt. It's, it's not like, you know, oh, let's just live and, and we'll see at the 20th, 25th of the month, is anything less we can pay off. No, no, no. You you pay it the first of the month, whatever you decide to pay. I mean, uh, pay what you believe the Lord tells you to pay. Don't do what I what I've done. But but let me tell you, if you do it, the Lord will come through for you because He wants to keep you out of it. He wants to get you out of it, as seriously, uh, uh, more seriously than you want to get out of it. Uh, I, we need to proclaim the word of the Lord over our lives. We need to start to see ourselves as God is seeing us, uh, as, as people that's free, 
That's people that's provided, people that's got more. I need to see myself as a fountain in society. I'm not here to just cover my cost. I'm here to help other people. I'm yet supposed to have, as a believer, I must have more than I need to give to other people. You must see yourself like that. Because if you don't see yourself like that, you will never grow unto that. You will never end up in a place like that. Because you don't see yourself. And you educate yourself till you get to that place. Where there's more than enough, more than for you, where you can help other people and sow into their lives and help them. And, 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 and it's one of the nicest thing on earth is to bless people. Is, is to have money to bless people and give for someone that's got whatever problem and say, listen, here is get out of the, this trouble uh, uh, in your life. The next thing is that, as we've already said, uh, I must live according to the will of the Lord and in the light of the Lord so that the blessing of the Lord can manifest in your life. The, the blessing and the provision for your whole life is already in you, but it cannot come out. If in the flesh you live in darkness and you live in fear and you live in intimidation, you live in a lack of knowledge, you don't educate yourself, you, you, you don't, don't take up responsibility concerning yourself. It's all, of, it's all about uh, um, living the life in the light and then it will release what is inside of you. To get out of debt and to get financially free is not to look for enough money on the inside, uh, on the outside. It's to see that everything is already in the inside. We are we we're created by God. We are sponsored by God. It is already in us. We just need to get it out. Get get rid of all this uh, 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 comparison, competition, and reaction. All these negative things. You know, when the bailiff stops at your house, uh, the, Mr. Jones, your neighbor will not not pay for you they will not worry about you you need to worry about yourself i've talked to so many people and they sit here and they don't have money for food they say my brother but how can you drive a car like this i mean it it's like 10 15 000 rand a month yeah but you know i can't drive something else you know because people what will people think of me i say well, what will people think of you you know it's what the, what you think about yourself Sell this car. Get out of this, this thing. You don't have money for your children for food. Now you sit and worry about what people will think about you. Those people will not come and help you. Otherwise, you wouldn't sit here. There's nothing wrong with your car. A beautiful car is a beautiful car. But if you cannot afford it and it, it, it takes the money out of your, out of your uh, uh, food budget, it's, it's not from God. I believe that what Hannes Dreyer said is that most people will not retire conveniently because the, the pension was put into their cars. And I see it. People, the biggest problem in the financial world is pension. People do not have pension. They've not made provision for anything. They just put everything, especially in their cars. We as, as men, we are car worried. You know, must have the right bucky, the right name, the right whatever, but we cannot afford it. And I'm not against cars. I'm not against anything. If you cannot afford it, don't drive it. Uh, I mean, you, you, you drive this thing, but this thing is just eating petrol like wherever. You cannot afford it. If you're financially free, fine. But if you're not, don't go there. Gun yourself a lever op hierdie aarde. That's not life to live like that in competition and reaction. This, decide for yourself what is the mandate upon your life. You are the captain of your own ship. Start to live your mandate. Yes, people will not understand you, not always like you, whatever. It doesn't matter. Live your mandate. You were sent to earth to live a mandate, to live a certain creative purpose. And that creative purpose gives you a mandate to live something and to have some amount of money. And, and start to think according to it. And, and uh, it, it's yours. Don't think of, you know, yeah, but uh, I mean, when I look at my mandate, I say, you know, this mandate will cost, you know, the moment it's a child in your life, you need 2 million rand. I mean, at least. Because that child will, in, in 18, 20 years, will eat around about 2 million in your life, will eat up. And the moment you've got a child, the Lord puts on your mandate another 2 million. And you just say, thank you, Lord, that you will help me to get another two million. And it's not about two million. It's about, I want to raise this child decently. Therefore, I need two million and I need to find it. Um, 
because the child comes with the bread basket and somewhere I need to find the bread basket with the two million in it. And I never could afford any child, but I raised six children. Why? Because God is actually the provider of any everything. I just need to live in his will and live according to his will and live in the light and everything that's needed will, will come somehow. He will do it because there's not, fi- there's not fixed rules to all of this. It's a life of blessing, a life of flow. It's a life of enjoying life. Uh, life is a game. You need to enjoy it. It's not a survival course. Okay, so be the captain of your own ship. Uh, uh, reaffirm what is God's plan in your, in your life and uh, uh, put yourself under accountability. Look to the circle of your life. You know, you need to be very uh, specific in all of this. You know, there was a certain time in my life when my first child came, God told me never to buy meat. You, know, you say, well, you know what, what? Oh, what a what a what a stupid rule, you know, what a stupid thing. The Lord said to me, You never buy meat because I will give you meat. I tell you, it was not something anyone knows about. There was always meat in my fridge. You know, it's at sometimes you know it was the last package you, we took out and then we said, We wonder where is the next sheep coming from, you know. Because I don't mind, I will buy meat. But the Lord said, Don't buy meat till I tell you to buy meat. And when the last child uh, you know, at a certain stage, uh, matriculated, the Lord said, now you go and buy meat again. And then suddenly everything just stopped. I knew a brother of mine, the Lord told him never to buy shoes. He always had shoes. Uh, till up to a certain point and let's short from now on, you will buy your shoes. You know, the Lord wants to be specific with you and me. And, and don't follow other people's rules. The Lord will talk to you personally. Find out from him what is his idea in the circle of your life you know is having a stake let's say every second day or whatever is it a rule is it good is it from him how must do you I, i'm not comparing myself to other people if the lord tells me not to eat meat at all you know that's fine he tells me not to meet eat meat don't worry about other people just worry about your own life and live your own life and enjoy your own life. It's not about right and wrong and comparing and, and status and classes. It's, it's, it's about a life of freedom. That is what it is all about. Maybe we had to look through our house and see what is the stuff that we can sell. Because there's so sometimes so many things that's just lying around. Let me tell you, each year you need to go through your house in December. And everything you haven't used in that year, you sell or you give away. If you haven't used something in a year, I tell you the chances are 99% you will never use it again in your life. We are orders in, in, a, in a big sense of the word. Sell stuff. Make your life simple and easy. Give it away, whatever you feel to do. Uh, but but uh, uh, live, live simple. Cut luxuries, you know. Um, sometimes, you know, in the beginning of our life, we, we never said we're not going to pay for holidays. The Lord will provide for us and we ever went on holidays. Then later on, we could afford to pay for holidays and then we paid for holidays. So, so sometimes in the beginning of our life with six children in our home, you know, holiday was a luxury. Then we said, Lord, you must help us to have creative plans how to get an holiday. And, and we always could get a creative plan from the Lord. Get creative about things. Uh, uh, holidays doesn't need to be so expensive. There's ways you can do it that's not so expensive. Uh, I don't want to give you all the ideas around it. Um, now put discipline on all aspects of your life. Uh, we call ourselves disciples, then we need to have discipline and just not spend money on all these loose things right through the day and wherever you see a shop, you enter and you buy this and you buy that and you know, uh, take your food with you from home, make your food there, uh, learn to, to uh, extend your meat, you know, and... Uh, in, 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 in ways, buy from maybe bulk uh, um, and buy cheaper. Oh, there's many ways we can have discipline in our lives. That's, uh, that's, 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 uh, that, is, that is good. And check your electricity. Don't keep your geyser on for the whole of the day. Your geyser is using half of your electricity. Uh, it's, it's half of your electricity bill. Go to the bank. Cut unnecessary costs. You can cut a lot of money when you cut a necessary uh, unnecessary cost. You can you can even uh, uh, argue or uh, you can onderhandel verzekeren om bankonkostes. 
Uh, in money wise, we always tell people you go home and you look at your bank account for all the debit orders that's going off. At one stage, a guy came back. He said to me, there was 5,000 Rand debit orders going off every month that he doesn't know where it's going and from what, for, for what is it? Because he never checked his debit orders. You see, it is a, it's a way when you cancel something, they don't cancel it. They let it go off another month. And then if you don't see it, they let just let it go on because it's your responsibility to check if they've they've stopped it. It's uh, I mean, that's how businesses, they do the thing, you know, these corporate businesses. It's just going on and on and on. I've had it time and again in my life. I cancel something, they don't cancel it. You just go on. And if you don't find it, they just leave it. And you can come back and say, listen, you haven't stopped it or whatever. You can do nothing against them. Uh, it's a way of making money. You need to check your, your accounts for things that's going off uh, every month. Check your vehicle situation. Uh, maybe you must get more aggressive. Not, uh, what is it? Buying stuff that you cannot buy cash. Uh, having all these debit orders that's going off, you know, you, you later on do not know if there's any money left for food or whatever. Don't live like that. It's not, it's, it's not life. Check your policies, your annuities and your insurances. I mean, uh, there's lots of things that you can cut there. Uh, they, they, I mean, uh, I don't want to go into the detail. Life insurance, they put things on there, you know, uh, extra things. They don't tell you, but go and read your policies. You'll see there's extra things there that you don't get any benefit for, but you pay for it uh, at the end of the day. I, I'm, I'm, re I'm finishing now and stop renting, buy your own house. Uh, start to sow in other people's lives. Yeah, but I will get one day financially free and then I'll know even, well, if you don't even sow 100, just start, if you if it's all that you think you can sow 100 rand, sow 100 rand. Don't let your life be the stop and the end of, of money that's coming in. Keep a flow through your life. And then the last one I want to say is that build your household correctly. Uh, now, you must be very, very, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Take it, what I say now, in the right light, not the right and the wrong. Me and my wife, we sit together. We always had the, we always had the desire to have lots of children. We eventually had six children. We made the decision that whatever she earned, if she earned any money, will be extra. I am responsible for everything that is, that is the running cost of the house. I am responsible as the man because that is a biblical principle. The man is responsible for the running cost. I'm not against women working. I'm not against women in corporate situations or whatever. They do excellent jobs. Do excellent. Even better than men. I haven't got issues with women. Just one thing I want to say to you is that the wife wasn't designed in the first place for, 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 for uh, just business. She's a, she's a home carer. She's, if, if she really can have a decision, but every woman I know say, I want to stay at home. I want to look after the children. It's not about laziness and doing nothing. They are, they are designed for that. And, and somehow maybe, you know, people say, let me have, let have only, a, uh, let's say work in the mornings and in the afternoons, I can look after the children, whatever. The point is not a right and a wrong. The point is whatever you can decide on, you can have. And I mean, even in our situation, we, we, we I didn't even have a, a constant salary. We made that decision. We get into that mindset. And the Lord honored us in that mindset. Uh, because it is a biblical mindset. Because for us, the education of the children is, is of utmost high value. Than having my wife maybe have a job and we get nice money. But you know, the children is falling through. And it's not being against women having salaries and, 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 and not able to work. That's not the issue. The issue is you must decide for yourself what is the values of your household. It's not for me to tell you your wife is not allowed to work. That's nonsense. The Lord must tell you what is his will. The Lord must tell you what is the plan, what is the process, and to what point you work. But let's just make sure your attitude, your mindset, and your values that you have and you are aggressive about will manifest if you are really, really persuaded about it because the Lord will help you to get there. Thank you very much.